Golf to Go is brought to you by the Hagen Oaks Golf Super Shop. Here's Frank LaRosa. You know, what I really love about the world of golf is, is people you meet. You don't know this, but we're friends. We are? Yeah, we're Facebook friends. Awesome. And that's the great thing about, <laughs> about, the, about the social world now. You know, I, I feel like I know you. And then that's just so being great. sitting here with you for 10 minutes, I do think I know you. Yeah, isn't that the truth, though, about Facebook? Yeah. Because I do run into people, and I, I'll have followed them or seen them or seen their family. And Oh my gosh, you really do feel closer to people. Yeah. yeah. So here you are, you, you have your own golf school. You obviously will we'll talk about the impact you made on the world of golf and, and the world for women. And uh, you're a mom and you're a lecturer and you uh, work for ESPN. How do you keep your life straight? I mean, it's difficult uh, at times, but I think I'm better busy. <laughs> you know, I think when I have nothing to do, I'm not as productive. So I really enjoy it and I, I love what I do. I'm very fortunate. Uh, being a golf professional is something uh, I didn't have planned. When I first went to college, I was on my way to law school. Mm -hmm. And at the end of college, I played college golf at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And my senior year, I had a, had a good year. I wasn't a terrific collegiate player, I, but I was a good team player. I played third mostly for our team, but I really started to play well that summer. Uh, and then I thought, you know, maybe I should give this a go. Fortunately, I had a great mom who said you can always go back to law school. Good. Uh, went to tour school, got my tour card on the first try. And uh, for me, I can't imagine being a lawyer. <laughs> 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 it was a great route. I never looked back. And uh, I think I, I do so much because I really do enjoy it. I'm happiest when I'm on a golf course. I'm happiest with them when I'm with people. Uh, so it's the perfect profession, I think, for me. So tell me how you go from being a player to being a, a commentator, to being a teacher. I mean, it, those are three different kinds of focus, I'm thinking. Huh? Yeah, they are. You know, for me, uh, when I went out on tour, I would tell you that it was pretty dismal. Uh, <laughs> I think I made about $2,500 uh, my first year. Uh, lost my sponsors, lost my car, uh, needed to get a job. Mm -hmm. And um, it really put things in perspective. I was so, so fortunate to meet my husband uh, during that time period, and then went back out on tour. Um, was a little bit more successful, but again, it wasn't uh, something that I it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. Um, and at the time, I was married in between and um, ended up being pregnant with my first daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, it was an easy choice at that point to to leave the tour and be with her. And what happened was my husband was working at Ibis Golf and Country Club at the time, and Jim Flick had his golf school at Ibis. Well, mm -hmm. I was driving my husband crazy because it was the first time I didn't have a job in my whole life. So who'd you see? What'd you do? <laughs> and he said, you know, you need a job. And uh, why don't you come watch Jim teach and see if that's something you might enjoy doing. And that's where it all began for me. I was uh, fortunate at the time, uh, Martin Hall worked for him, worked for Jim Flick. I got the opportunity to learn from Bob Tosky, Mark wow. Wood, Charlie Epps, Laird wow. Small, Dean Rymouth, uh, Mike Malaska. We're all on staff and I was being mentored by them, so I could ask for no better introduction to teaching. They were so passionate about the game that it was infectious. And that's where I really started to love uh, being with people and, and significantly changing their lives with, with golf. And so for me, it, that was an easy easy route to go, and I, and I enjoyed it. Great circle, because all of those people have, have taught here at the Northern California uh, Player Teacher Forum, and here I you are teaching pictures. today. Yeah. I saw those pictures today, yeah. and uh, you know Martin used to throw me in the bunker for, for eight hours at a time in South Florida and say, how's it going down there? <laughs> 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 I had sand in my hair, and, uh, but I learned so, so much from them that I really do credit them with a lot of my teaching philosophies and my development in teaching. And then you had that little uh, sidelight there, the Greater Hartford Open. I did, you know, uh, I didn't play my best golf, I would tell you, until my children were a little bit older. I think I was about 35 years old. Uh, I think all of us mature a little differently mm -hmm. on the golf course. And I think for me, having some things in my life that uh, kept my focus really made me spend time when I had it on my game. Uh, it wasn't like I had all day to train. I knew I had a couple hours in between a full-time job, my children, and I really did a better preparation. Mm -hmm. And my game showed it. And I started to play some really incredible golf in 2001, 2002, 2003. Uh, won the section championship in Connecticut, which earned me the right to play in a PGA Tour event, which I never thought they would give me the opportunity to do. And truly, that changed changed my life. Sure. I mean, basically, you're one of three women that have ever done that, right? Yeah, well, Babe Zaharias yeah. uh, did it first, and she did it more than one time, mm -hmm. uh, 58, well, now, gosh, longer than that, 59 years ago now, maybe even 60. Um, and then uh, Michelle Wee played, Annika. Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah. so it's Annika four of you. played, yeah, right. yeah, and then I played as well, yeah. and uh, it was an experience that I will never forget. It was just an amazing, amazing week. 
So were the, were the men receptive? Were, were you okay with that? I mean, did, did they welcome you with open arms or did they say, hmm, just kind of, you know, this is our <laughs> gig here? <laughs> you know, I think for me, and I can only speak for me, I think they understood that, that I was out there for maybe some different reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I made the choice to play, certainly I was extremely competitive and I wanted to be competitive. But out of respect for them, uh, for my time being, again, I was a head golf professional at the time, two young children, my husband was working full time, so I had a, a short period of time to prepare, but in those hours I prepared Worked hard. and that I focused directly on that, so I don't mean to sound like I didn't. Sure. Um, but for me to think I could compete against the best players in the world um, that were male and who were playing week in and week out, day in and day out, uh, would have been disrespectful. I wanted to play well, I certainly wanted to do the best I possibly could. But I was really out there uh, not only to show my children that I was willing to be brave enough to take an opportunity when it came along, and that's something that's really held fast with our family, which has been great. But I really also wanted to show the world that, that women, women could compete, uh, could enjoy it, and that golf was a game for everybody. And so for me, I feel like I accomplished that. Boy, if you never did anything else in your life, that's, that's uh, quite a full plate right there. But you did other things, and, and you have your own golf school now. And that, that's going to be kind of fun. Yeah, I have, uh, for me, I have a big clientele at home uh, that I love to teach. I teach everybody from a brand new adult player who's never picked up a club. Uh, to people aspiring to play on the tour. So I love it just as much, teaching somebody that's brand new. I think I actually probably get a bigger kick out of it, to be quite honest with you, when I get somebody to hit the ball in the air for the first time or get them addicted to playing. Um, I'm all about uh, not developing lesson takers. I'm all about developing players. Oh, I love it. Yeah, so yeah. for me, it's once I can, if I get them on the golf course within three lessons, I, I know I can addict them. <laughs> and typically that's what happens. And it's really a partnership for me. It's not, okay, good luck. Go have a nice day. I really am. Um, I want I want them to do what they're looking to have happen. Whether it's maybe playing their first corporate event, or maybe it's just to enjoy golf with their family, or maybe it's to be a collegiate Division One golfer. So mm -hmm. for me, I I have that whole group of people, uh, and I, I love that. It seems to me you, you almost have to if you if you expect the game of golf to continue, that you have to be a cheerleader for the sport, and you, you have to find a way to grow the game. You do. You have to. I think, and you have to be creative about it now because you know, as we all know, people's time uh, is limited, mm -hmm. and they're really looking for entertainment value. And I think sometimes when you can look at your business plan as, are, am I offering entertainment as well as performance? Um, if you are, and you have a plan and you have a roadmap for that player, whether again, whether they're brand new and they're just looking for some skill level that they can join their family to play golf, or whether they really want to become a PGA Tour player. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's our job to show them how through growth we can get them there and that we're a partner in this. And let me show you some benchmarks, let me show you some performance levels that we need to complete together. And then when we do, um, hopefully the enjoyment level goes up. It's going to be exciting to, to take somebody from, from a, you know, a, an entry player and, and, and maybe if they don't even become the best player that they can be, that they become a player that enjoys the game. I mean, that's got to be just rewarding as well. There. You know, it is. I, I'll give you an example. I have uh, four women who I started teaching two years ago who are 100% addicted now to traveling <laughs> and playing in pro-ams. And, you know, one of them may be a 25 handicap. I think the other three are around 30 handicaps. Absolutely loving the game so much that I get the phone call, Where's, where are we going next? Where are we going next? <laughs> that, to me, is an incredible satisfaction. Uh, you know, they've broken 100 for the first time, but not doing it repeatedly. But that doesn't matter to them. They just want to know, you know, where we're headed next for our next golf tournament. And if you had met these women two years ago, they would have said to you, golf tournament? Oh, I can't do that. And now it's their love. And that's changed the culture of the game. I mean, the, the, the growth from women and the excitement that they bring to the game, I, I think it's really fun to watch. It is, and I'm glad to see that across the country we're getting really back into the junior space mm -hmm. as well. I feel like we diverged from that a little bit, and I'm generally speaking, there's so many PJ professionals out there that are incredible in the junior space. But I think that coaching model that a lot of us are starting to have those discussions about where we take a child from a young age all the way through benchmarks, through high school even, um, is really catching on. Mm -hmm. And with parents, they, they're looking for an activity that I think golf meets. Uh, for every child, you know, character, integrity, respect, as well as having some athletic time outside uh, in a healthy environment with friends. You know, there's no better sport than ours 
uh, to introduce your children to, in my opinion. Which brings up a question. What's your reaction to, to Nicholas's thought that uh, we need to be a team game, that kids need to have a, a number on their back and, and a, a, a team jersey? Well, I'm a huge advocate for that. I had a PGA this year. was my first year that I participated in the PGA Junior League program. Um, I really wanted to have a team and mm -hmm. see what it was all about and understand where he was coming from. Yeah. And I, I know Davis is a part of that program as well. And, and we, so we started up this team, and, and honestly, I've never seen anything like it. We had 12 children to start out with, boys and girls, uh, from the ages of, I, ha I even had a seven-year-old on my team, so seven to 13 mm -hmm. on our team. Uh, they had the uniforms with the numbers, yeah, yeah. and we put their names on the backs of their numbers, and we wanted to see how it all went. It doubled immediately from my next session. The parents loved it. Parents who don't even play golf were coming out getting carts, watching, food and beverage after, but it was really more a sense of a family and a community. Yeah. And our team ended up, we had a banquet at the end of the year, <laughs> the families want to get together, they're getting together to go skiing in the winter. Um, so this is something that really, I think, is going to grow rapidly. We're almost up to 600,000 kids for 2014 that That's we're expecting yeah. uh, for junior golf play or league play. And so I, it's something that I'm definitely uh, going to amp up in my business, and I think it's a wonderful tool to grow the game. A lot, like I said, on your plate, a uh, lot that you've already accomplished. Give me the next five years for Susie Whaley. The next five years. Well, the next five years are really busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, for me, it's all about growing my business, uh, first and foremost, as a PGA member. I'm also an LPGA member. I'm also very adamant about education. Uh, amongst our professionals and making sure that we are really uh, learning each and every day and striving to become even better than we are today. So that's a big um, part of my world. I, I really love to go to things like today, instructional mm -hmm. seminars, and, and get little bits and pieces from golf professionals all over the world who, who, are, who really, you know, you find something from everybody. And there's so many great teachers out there that you may not know their name, right. but they're really developing and growing the game in a way maybe you've never seen. So for me, that's exciting. I'm running for national office for the PGA of America, so I'm looking forward to that uh, campaign that will run all the way through 2014. Uh, so it'll be a busy year, but one that I'm looking forward to. Well, uh, you know, the people I talk to say Susie Whaley is going to be the first one to be that now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. You want to be on my committee? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. We'll talk about it on Facebook. Thank you very much. <laughs> Enthusiasm, uh, you know, appreciation for the game, uh, professional. You got it all. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks very much for being with us, Susie. It's a pleasure. Susie Whaley.